Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Necroxis and this is going to be just a little short video. Well, maybe not too short, but shorter than the rest. Um, that's a, basically a reaction to the 5.3 story that we've all that we found out um, throughout the PTR. Um, after completing both storylines, I had a lot of opinions about how I felt about the Horde and the Alliance's story, and I wanted to make a little wrap-up video to respond to all that we learned. Um, although, do be prepared, uh, a large portion of this video is probably going to be me complaining about the Alliance side, so just a uh, forewarning. Uh, this also is going to be a lot of off-the-cuff stuff as compared to, you know, a scripted video where I lay out exactly every single thing I like and dislike, so... I'm doing it fresh after completing the Horde one and having just completed the Alliance one and I just wanted to get all my thoughts out at once without having to overanalyze it because sometimes uh, overanalyzation can also be a bad thing. So, um, and you know, since I almost exclusively deal with just a story on my YouTube channel, I'm only going to focus on that. Um, I'm not really going to address the, uh, the mechanical stuff in 5.3 because you can go 50 million places to get all the information about that. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to start off with the likes because, uh, to be honest, even though I, I've been complaining in my last couple of videos, there is quite a lot that I do enjoy for 5.3, but then um, the dislikes portion is going to be afterwards, and that, even though I do like a lot of stuff, that's probably going to be the longer segment because I have more to say um, as to why I dislike something rather than why I like it. So let's get started. I really enjoyed the fact that Blizzard went back to the old world and they started changing stuff there to reflect the changing storyline. Uh, we did know at the end of 5.2, for those of you who finished the Rathion quest uh, in 5.2 or heard the sound files, that we are told that the Pandaren quest, or the quest in Pandaria is over. So, it, it when I heard that, it struck me that we were obviously going to be returning back to the old world. So, I like that they brought the story back. I like that they, I like the reason that they gave significance to the Barons again as a very significant trade route. Because that was the reason that a lot of the fighting happened in the Barons in Cataclysm. It's the reason why the Alliance ultimately had to push from Theramor up to the Night Elven lands to provide them with support. And it is the impetus for a lot of the, the clashes that happen in the Southern Barons. So I really appreciate that they brought it back. They even changed some stuff to Duratar, which is nice. Um, they put a couple, they put some Garage forces outside Orgrimmar, and they really started showing that Garage is amping up his defense of the city. So, from that aspect, I like that they're covering all of their angles, because if they would have just found another island somewhere, something, um, and we started fighting on there again, it would have felt a lot less true to the actual story than what they're doing now. Another thing I really liked was that the story is really consistent, at least from the Horde side of things. Uh, the Mists of Pandaria storyline has been building pretty significantly, uh, and I would argue pretty much more cohesively than all of the other expansions thus far. Even though we were told who the, quote, final boss of uh, the expansion is going to be in Garage, um, Blizzard seems to have done a really, really good job this expansion thus far, building up the tensions within the Horde to the dethroning of Garage, and even up to 5.2 for the Alliance side as well. Um, I'm not exactly happy with the Alliance at 5.3, but I'll get to that later. Um, we have Vulcan in the Dark Spears, we have Bane in the Torn, we have Lorthamar in the Blood Elves, and then we have the Bilgewater Goblins. All four of those factions... Oh, and well, Sylvanas is, is uh, mentioned too at the end. So all five factions are brought up in some capacity, and it's nice that they are beginning to gel their stories together into one cohesive rebellion. So I really did like that too. I really also enjoyed the fact that they included the story of the Seventh Shah in the patch. Uh, it isn't exactly uncommon for them to drop story threads, <coughs> Vashir and <coughs> the Abyssal Maw, but um, I actually wasn't sure if they were going to get to the Seventh Shah. I thought, I didn't think they forgot about it, but I thought they sort of just left it hanging so that if they wanted to, they could have addressed it in the future. So I'm very happy, not even that the Shah is the Shah of Pride, because personally, um, and if you listen to Boat Waiter's lore, you've heard me say this before. I thought the, the seventh shot was going to be the shot of envy. So I, I don't even care what shot it is. I'm just happy Blizzard didn't uh, drop the storyline. Um, and tying in with that, I also enjoyed the fact that they included returning to Pandaria because, you know, the expansion is called Mists of Pandaria. And even though we're told that the Pandaren campaign is over, it is nice to still have to go back there, at least from a cohesive storytelling point. Um, I also really, really like the story of the Emperor. 
Um, although that does raise a lot of questions, like what is he doing? Is he a ghost, or is he back, or um, did he somehow make a, a pact, or or did he knowingly not eliminate the seventh Shah so he could cloak Pandaria in mists, which he kind of admits, but it's not really confirmed. Um, although that does raise a lot of questions, it's nice to. They've been hinting, let's just say they've been hinting at the Emperor either returning or having an influence at some point in the story for quite a long time now. So, I'm glad that they brought him back in some capacity. I also really, really enjoy that there is an actual character change in Vol'jin after his assassination attempt. I'm not going to say he seems more bloodthirsty, but he's more passionate about the Horde, and he has finally reached a level where me as the player and as the witness of the story... I can actually believe now that he could become the the, the war chief of the horde. So um, before that, he always seemed kind of one dimensional. He was always like, "Yay, Thrawn, his horde is awesome." But we actually see more. We see anger in him because of the assassination attempt in Garrosh. We see uh, passion in him about saying, you know, the horde is family. And I really, really like. I've I've grown to like Vol'jin more than I are. Al- I already did like Vol'jin quite a lot. Uh, in the World of Warcraft and just Warcraft in general storyline. But I've grown to like him a lot more because of the rounding of the edges that he develops in Missa Pandaria. He is now a full-fledged character, in my opinion. Now, this also segues really nice into the next thing that I like, and that's the Horde storyline is very heartfelt. And even though I don't play the Horde much, and it certainly isn't my faction of choice, I felt as if 5.3 was a very Horde patch. It reminded me much of Thrall's Horde about family and unity, and we see appearances, or at least mentioned, by basically all of the faction leaders in the Horde. Um, We got Thrall, like I said earlier. We have Thrall, Vol'jin, you know, Bane, Lorthamar. uh, The Bilgewater goblins even show up, despite the fact that they still don't have a faction leader. But um, it's 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 very much a Horde patch, and uh, we finally see more of Bane, and I I really really like Bane, and I, I don't even know why he's. He's basically been the level-headed one throughout this entire story, despite the fact that Garrosh assassinated his dad. So, uh, Bane, in my mind, has always been like that stalwart badass, even though he's he's still really young, uh, especially compared to the other faction leaders. But I really, really like Bane, and he does show up a little bit. He doesn't have a large role, but he does show up. So Blizzard is saying, you know, we haven't forgotten about Bane, and Bane basically saying, we can't join the Rebellion yet because they're still torn, in Orgrimmar, it makes sense. Everything it, everything makes sense up to this point for the Horde. Basically, the thing I like the most is, as I briefly hit on, is that unlike the other expansions, Missa Pandaria, they basically cover all of their angles, at least when you talk about the Horde's participation in the story. Switching now to the Alliance, I really, really, really enjoyed the appearance of Moira Bra- uh, Bronzebeard and the Dark Iron Dwarves. Um, speaking from a faction that has the Draenei, which are completely ignored all the time, um, except for one quest in Cataclysm. <clears throat> I'm not bitter or nothing, but uh, I really like the fact that Blizzard at least remembered to put in uh, our lesser popular, quote popular, uh, factions that we have, um, you know, like the gnomes and the dwarves. The, the gnomes aren't in there yet, but I would love it if they were in some capacity in 5.4 or beyond. But um, yeah, it, this ties into the whole quote, Trials of the High King that Metzen was talking about at the last BlizzCon. And I have to say, at least from from at least from the sole difference of the A Little Patient scenario from 5.1, the Blood in the Snow scenario as it pertains to these Trials of the High King are much, much, much better in comparison. It, it, it's so much better. It doesn't make the faction leader who they're examining in this case which is Moira Bronzebeard, it doesn't make her look like an incompetent idiot who was completely off the rails from her original character like Taronda was. So I at least appreciated the fact that they didn't butcher another Alliance faction leader. And finally, as an Alliance player, I loved the resurgence of Amber Kiernan and Sully. Sully, not so much. I'm more of a bigger fan of Amber because in Westfall, she was just an ultimate badass. Even though she was only in, what, two quests, she still was amazing. And uh, uh, there was a big question about, you know, if Amber and Sully and, and Mishka and the other ones survived at the end of the Jade Four story where the, uh, the statue gets blown up. And I'm very glad they finally have accounted all of the characters. So I like that as well. Now, as for the dislikes, before I get to the Alliance, 
Um, from the Horde side of things, I have to say, I really, really, really dislike the fact that Thrall is back. I mean, we knew that he was going to have to show up in some capacity, but, I mean, it seems like they're already positioning him as, like, the heroic sacrifice of the patch, even though I am 99% sure they will never kill off Thrall, or at least they won't do it in a way that doesn't just lionize him even more than he already is. Because, let's, let's be honest here, folks, Thrall is Metzen. That's his character. And um, I just I, I just like the fact that we're revolving around Thrall again. Even though I said that the, the storyline is very heartfelt, that scene only came about because Thrall has to give his whole monologue about, I hate how the Horde's spilling Horde blood and blah, 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 blah. And he's, you know, he's super Jesus, green Jesus, Mary Sue. And I just, I really dislike the fact that He's absent all of the expansion except for two very pivotal moments. And in those two moments, there's such gravity of the situation that it just it compiles more and more and more into the whole stupid storyline of just giving Thrall everything and making him be the savior to everything. It wasn't enough that he Kamehameha's Deathwing at the end of Cataclysm. We have to make him the one who liberates uh, the island in 5.1 or we have to be the one to make him uh, go into Orgrimmar in 5.3 and stand up to Garrosh and go find Eitrig and Sarfang. And it's just, it's just enough. Blizzard, enough. We're enough with Thrall. I'm, I'm done with Thrall. I don't even care about him anymore. And I have a feeling that in the new book that's coming out about Vol'jin, Thrall's going to be a main character because Blizzard just, they just can't help themselves. There are so many other amazing characters in the Horde. Bane. Bane doesn't get enough screen time. Lorthamar is finally getting screen time. And the more we learn about him, the more badass he is. Vol'jin's finally getting more screen time. Oh, and how about the biggest issue with this whole storyline? Uh, Gallywix is absent. Gallywix, who is supposedly the faction leader of the Bilgewater Goblins, he is nowhere to be found. He's not shown if he supports Garrosh. It's not shown if he hates Garrosh. We get one note in 5.1 where he basically says if Garrosh screws him over, he's going to leave. But that that's nothing. That's typical of any goblin of any faction. So it would be nice if if they didn't bring in Gallywix, then at least have a faction leader for the goblins. How about Sassy Hardwrench? I've always wanted her to be the faction leader. She has far more screen time than Gallywix, and she has a personality, and she's kind of a badass. So why don't Blizzard, why don't you just give the goblins a faction leader? I, it just it doesn't make sense to me. But now, it's time to move on to the biggest thing that I disliked in this patch. And as big as the, this is, it's also a really big reason. The Alliance's entire storyline. It just doesn't fit in. It doesn't make logical sense. And it, it, it just feels like nothing more than we as a faction are being shoehorned into supporting the Horde's rebellion. Just because Blizzard doesn't apparently want to make another storyline for the Alliance side. Let's delve into this a little bit, though, shall we? Um, Varian and the Alliance, they, they don't need the assistance of the Rebellion. Uh, we're told several times that the Alliance isn't strong enough to assault Orgrimmar on their own. In fact, Vol'jin says that very thing, and he says that if the Alliance did, we're just going to fail, and then he's going to give our corpses to Sylvanas. But all of Mists of Pandaria is evidence to the contrary. We see the Alliance coalescing more than ever in this expansion. In 5.1, we see the Night Elves in Tyrande. As much as I hate how stupid they made Tyrande was, they made the Night Elves support Varian. Boom. The Worgen basically can be assumed to also be behind Varian due to the events of Wolfheart. Boom. In 5.3, we see the Dwarves. They support the Alliance now fully. The, the, the one rogue faction, if you can even call it rogue, in the Dwarves, which is the Dark Irons, they are now reined in. Boom. And we can assume that they can bring along their gnomish cousins because they're always both the same too. Oh, and if you thought I forgot the Draenei, I didn't. Except they're just not involved in the storyline whatsoever, as usual. So, that's all the factions. Other than that, we have the fact that Jaina and the Kirin Tor are now behind the Alliance. And they have essentially a floating death fortress on the Alliance's side. Not to mention Jaina also has a super duper powerful uh, enchanted staff from Lei Shen's lightning powers that you as the player get for her at the end of the 5.2 story. I'll say it again. We as a faction, we do not need the Horde Rebellion. It's as simple as that. We are more united than ever, and the only reason that the people in 5.3 keep repeating this lie is, like I said before, to shoehorn the Alliance into going along for the story 
mainly because when you look at the substance, the alliances side is very, very, very lagging. So that that's a good segue into the faction specific story of each side. Um, for the alliance, it's it's immensely inferior to the hordes. Uh, like I was talking about earlier, I don't even play the horde, but I had a heartfelt moment during the battle. Um, for Senjin Village, where I felt like, yeah, this must be what it feels like to be the Horde. And the Alliance just doesn't have that. The Even the conclusion of their storyline is, is an entire... Here, here's the reaction I had, and you can actually go and watch it uh, on my previous video. My reaction to the end of the Alliance's story was, uh, is that it? So what? That was my entire reaction. The fact that one side is so amazingly, like, it, it punches you right in the heart and you're like, yeah, let's go get Garage for all the shit that he did to the Horde. The Alliance is basically just like, well, I guess we're just coming along for the ride. That means you failed from a storytelling standpoint. Where the Horde actually gets to participate in two pretty epic and important battles for significant landmarks in Duratar, the Alliance does what exactly? We use a mechanical cat to spy upon Garage and his forces. And then we're sent to Vol'jin, a horde leader, who essentially bullies us into a loose alliance. And the worst thing of all is that Varian is actually written to support the decision. Now, it is true that in Varian's letter that he sends you to, as the player afterwards, that he basically says, let them kill each other. That doesn't make up for the fact that the entire alliance storyline is supremely boring. You, you don't do anything. There is no passion. The only passion that you see in the video from me is because we meet back up with Amber, who I like as a character, and admittedly, she's kind of a, uh, a very rare case, and not everybody's going to like her. In fact, most people probably don't feel one way or another about her. The only reason I was happy about it was because I personally liked her as a female character who was a badass. That's it. That's the only reason. Something that I disliked a little bit less than that, but still found irritating was the fact that we hear from Jaina in every single patch in Mists of Pandaria, and she is just completely absent from 5.3. There's this whole build-up between her and Varian where Varian is becoming more reasonable, where Jaina still is ardently against ever supporting the Horde ever, and we see that in 5.1, those clash. 5.2, she's the center star, and we see her basically say, you know, the only act of humility or reasonable reasonableness, it's a word I'm inventing right now, uh, the only time we see her do that is at the end of the 5.2 scenarios where she backs off uh, from the Horde and she returns to her base. Um, that whole uh, juxtaposition or, you know, that that conflict that, that might be brewing, it's just completely just dropped off in 5.3. Uh, it just lends more credence to the fact that it doesn't seem like Blizzard put any time whatsoever into the 5.3 story. And the mechanics of, of the spying are, are nifty enough, but the story of it is just, it rests on very flimsy uh, evidence or support or whatever you want to call it. it. It just doesn't seem like they really cared. They, they want, it's, it, my biggest issue is it seemed like they wanted to tell the story of the rebellion picking up steam and then after they completed that they realized oh shit there's another faction that plays this game too that isn't the horde and so then they just chopped and sliced things together really quickly and they threw it all together and thought oh well i guess that's good enough if towards the end here you f you hear me going a little bit more if i'm stumbling more or if i'm i'm, I'm interrupting myself it's because as a ardent lover of the lore, and if, if you watch any of my videos or if you listen to any of my appearances on Boat Waiters Lore, you can easily tell that I love this storyline. I'm looking across my room at my bookshelf, and I have all of the WoW books, I have most of the comics, I have basically every piece of extended material outside of the game that there is, and it just it frustrates me that they are just dropping one faction story so significantly to the fact, uh, to so far that I just... The only reason I'm probably going to play it in 5.3 is because they have an epic pair of boots that my character needs that's an upgrade. Like I said earlier, from a, stand a storytelling standpoint, that's just a complete and utter failure. I could rant more, but I realize that this video is now almost tw 20 minutes long, and <laughs> I don't want it to be too supremely long, 
just for her wrap up video and you can hear me ranting about this in other places so um, if if you disagree with anything about me or if you or with me or if you have any questions about 5.3 um, leave them in the comments as you can tell from my other videos I, I watch I watch my comments on my videos like all the time and I will answer whatever I can to the best of my abilities if you have any theories that you think I missed or other things that you think I'm not being fair about or you know whatever uh, leave those in the comments I'll address those uh, if I can um, but other than that I just wanted to really really thank you guys for watching this whole series from a lover of the lore I, I love bringing videos like this to other people um, you know I don't make any money on it although it would be nice one day if I could um, but the biggest thing if you like this that you could help me is to share this with other people who like the story um, you know you can go on YouTube and search 50 million other players who are just playing the game. Uh, I don't proclaim to be a particularly great player in any regard, but I would like to think that I am at least a little bit more knowledgeable than most people about the story. So, if you know anybody who likes the story of, of Warcraft and you know you think they would find my videos interesting, please send them my way. I would be forever grateful. Um, uh, as well as if, if you like this stuff and you haven't subscribed yet, that also helps me out a lot. Um, and finally, you know, the whole, the liking thing. So if you liked it, so just go click a like. It really helps me out, get my video a little bit, uh, more exposure. But other than that, if you have any suggestions about what you would like me to do next, because there is going to be some downtime now, because 5.3 actually isn't even out yet. So it's not even going to be till a little bit after that comes out, that the 4, the 5.4 stuff starts coming out. So I won't even be able to bring that into you, or to you, until that happens. So if you have any suggestions about some lore stuff for Warcraft that you might like, um, just basic general questions. I'm not going to do like a video on just the lore because, you know, as a part of But Wait There's Lore, that's basically what they do. But if there's stuff in the game or maybe in the RTS games that you would like to see or you have questions about, uh, feel free to ask. I will do my best to answer them. Uh, if I think it's going to be an entertaining video, I'll even record it and make a special episode about it. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, or listening at least, everybody. Uh, my name, as always, is Necroxus, and I will see you for, you know, whatever the next topic is. There's always more lore to explore. So, I'll see you guys next time. Farewell.